In this video, we'll be learning about connection pooling and we'll be diving deep into how the connect function works in Mongoose. So we know that we can connect to a MongoDB instance by using the mongoose.connect method while passing the connection string as the parameter. Now the standard connection string URI is of the following format where we first mention that we are connecting to a MongoDB database followed by the username and password that we've generated to connect to the database. Now, depending on the access policy, the user might be a read only user or an admin, which can write to the database and also maybe alter the schemas and drop a collection. Then followed by the username and password, you can have either the main host name, which is a single entity or multiple host names for each of the shards that are present in your MongoDB instance, followed by which you have your default database name. So for our case, it was user management. And then you can choose to have some of the few optional parameters that we can pass to configure our connection. Now, if you directly compare it to the connection string that we currently have, we had the keyword MongoDB in front of it to denote that we're connecting to a MongoDB instance. Then we had the username and password, which we are basically just storing here on top into variables and we are directly referencing them in the string. Now the connection string that I copied had the host name for each of the shards followed by the default port number which is 27017 and right at the end here you can see that we have the user management default database name and a few other optional configuration for example setting SSL to true. Now setting SSL as true basically ensures that all of our communication is happening over an encrypted channel. Now, the one important thing that we want to understand here is how the connect method works. So the connect method is asynchronous in nature. So if you remember in our code, we always use the await keyword in front of the connect method call. But Mongoose also enables us to start using our models immediately without waiting for the connection to be established. Now, this behavior is valid because Mongoose buffers all the model method calls internally. Now, if this sentence here did not make sense to you, let me demo what I meant by it. So here in our test script, I've made a few changes where instead of creating a user, we're querying a user using the method find one. So what this basically does is it goes through the user's collection and it will return the first document that's there. So if we go back to compass instance, as of now, we had three documents in the user's collection. So if I just run this test script, I will get back the details of the very first user that we created. Now notice here in the code, when we call the mongoose.connect method, we had the await keyword in front of it. So we waited for the connection to be established first. And only then we called user.find1 method, which basically queries the database for a document. Now in a previous statement, we said that the model methods do not wait for the connection to be established because all of these methods are buffered. So if we just go ahead and remove the await keyword that's there in front of mongoose.connect, save our changes and run the script again. So I'll say node connect test.js. You'll see that the code still works. And that's because all of these queries are buffered by mongoose and they're basically waiting in a queue for execution. So even though when we invoke this particular query, our database connection wasn't established yet. What we were able to do is buffer the query. And when the connection was ready, we could see the query actually running. Now this little behavior here might be confusing for a lot of people. So you can choose to turn the auto buffering off by adding it as an option to your schema. So remember here, the change needs to be made in the schema. And for that, along with the schema object, we need to pass an additional object, which has the configuration for that schema. And the two configurations that we need to put to disable buffering are buffer commands and auto create, both of which will be setting to false. So we'll go back to the user model under the models folder. And if you remember, after we had defined the schema, we were also passing an options object. Here we need to add our two new configurations, which were buffer commands set as false and auto create set as false. Now enabling this would disable buffering. So if we now run our connection test script again, you'll see that this time we're getting an error back, which clearly mentions that we cannot call users.find1 before initial connection 
if buffer command is set to false and we have to make sure that we are using await in front of mongoose connect if we have that one particular configuration set to false. Now this is just a little thing that you have to remember about connect method and how it enables auto buffering because it can lead to unexpected results while your application is running. Now moving on to the topic of connection pooling. A connection pool can be defined as a cache of open database socket connections that are maintained by Mongoose or any other database library to seamlessly transfer data between your database and model layer. So the model layer is nothing but the point of contact for your JavaScript code to connect to the database. Now why do we maintain a connection pool? Because it reduces the cost of opening and closing the connections every single time for the query which basically says that opening and closing connection adds extra overhead for our application whenever we are trying to contact and query a database. So instead what we can do is maintain a cache of open connections which can be utilized throughout the run of our application without closing our connections every single time. And all of this is internally managed by Mongoose automatically. So every connection that is created with the method connect is backed by a connection pool automatically which is internally configured and its default max socket connection limit is 100. So the cache that we talked about has 100 open socket connections by default. Now the custom pool configuration can be enabled by passing an options object as the second parameter to the connect method. So, so far we were not passing any options object to connect, but we can choose to pass a few configurations, some of which also allow us to define custom pooling behavior. So for example, we can change the max pool size, which by default is 100. So let's say the total amount of connection that a database can handle is very less and we cannot afford 100 active connections at a single point of time. So then what we can do is reduce this number to a lower limit, for example, 20. And then all we need to do is while we are connecting to Mongoose along with our connection string, we need to pass this additional options object with our custom configuration. Now let's talk about the important configuration that we can pass as connection pooling options. So the first one that we already discussed is max pool size. So this is the maximum number of sockets Mongoose will keep open for any given database connection. By default, max pool size is 100 and this value can be increased as per the requirements. So for a given connection or a given socket, only a single operation is allowed per socket at a time. So for example, if there are multiple slow queries, that will block our application's connection for long. It might be a better idea to increase the number so that other queries could also be handled properly by our application. And on the other side, if multiple applications are using the same database where each of them are maintaining a connection pool, there might be a chance that we might exceed the total connections that database can handle. So there we may want to decrease the pool size, else we'll end up exceeding the max connections limit which basically just crashes your database in a few cases. Now, similarly, we can define a minimum pool size. So this is the minimum number of sockets Mongoose will keep open for a given database connection. So the idea here is that after a given socket connection has been inactive for, let's say, a certain amount of time, Mongoose closes that socket connection automatically. So there can be a case where all of your connections have been inactive for a long time. And even then, if you still want to keep a few connections always live, you might want to update this minimum pool size setting so that you always have a cache of active database connections. Then we have something called socket timeout MS, which just stands for milliseconds. So this is the time duration in milliseconds that Mongoose will wait before terminating a connection socket after initial connection. Now this could happen because of inactivity as we just discussed or due to a query which just took too long to respond. Now the value by default is set to 30 seconds or 30,000 milliseconds. But if certain transactions are known to be taking more than 30 seconds, we might want to increase the socket timeout to let's say a minute or more. Now, how many connections are open for your database instance is something that you can check out from the database tab here on Atlas. So if I click on database, it shows me a few graphs here, out of which the second graph shows me the number of connections that were established to our database 
and as you can see here there are 16 active connections as of now so from the dashboard itself you can track the number of connections that are active at any given point of time and you can configure the active connections by just passing a new object in your connect method so here as the second parameter i can pass a new object where let's say i can define the min pool size as 10 so even in the worst case we'll have at least 10 connections that are active now connection pooling is something that i feel is really important for anyone to understand before they start working with databases because a lot of people overlook how they are managing their database connections i've also seen a very bad practice being followed in the software industry where people close the database connection after every database operation it's not a very practical approach and it makes more sense to have multiple active connections while your server is live and as the connections time out the mongoose library automatically closes those connections so that was it for this video we discussed operation buffering and connection pooling in the mongoose library now next up we'll actually go ahead and create our crud apis which will create read update and delete these database documents using nextjs apis